Welcome back to the Chasing Tone Podcast. I, of course, am Brian Wampler, and today, back again with me, is Blake Wyland. And today, we talk about troubleshooting your pedal, possible pedal problems, and how to fix it. Let's jump right in. Mr. Wampler. Mr. Wyland. What's happening? Well, modifying pedals. What are you doing? Um... Uh, well, I was just, um, well, I guess this, this brings up something I wanted to talk about, what mm-hmm. I was doing before we started talking. Mm-hmm. Um, let's say, for instance, you got a, a, an amp guy, or a pedal guy, or a guitar guy, whatever type of guy you got. You got a guy. Why is it a guy? Well, it could be a girl. Okay. Whatever let, it is. Let's, what a- yeah, I mean, you get, let's not be biased here. Don't be, don't sorry, be sexist, sorry. dude. Stop being sexist. S- sorry, sorry. Say you got a person... There you go. Wait, why does or, it have to be a person? A dog. Why it does it have a to dog. be a person? Say you have a uh, a preferred. I don't know. Thing. I can't. I can't, I can't win. It's I a, can't win. It's a being of some sort. Why has it got to be a being? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's an it. <laughs> it <laughs> what are you saying? What are you saying they're not good enough to be a person? <laughs> I can't win. Can't I don't win. know. You can't win yeah. in that situation. Anyways, so you have um, you have this person that's into amps, right? Or yes, makes well, sense. Like. Now I'll just be very specific about what I'm talking about. Sure. Uh, and you and you've trusted them with all kinds of things, and you trust their knowledge and their abilities, and they're your they're your person. Um, and they suggest something to you, like for years on end, and then and and you're like, yeah, nah, I'm good. Um, you you should do it if they're suggesting it because well, it depends. They up- <laughs> if they're like, see that bridge, you should jump off that. You know. Well, I mean, but maybe you should. <laughs> you know, maybe it would be maybe it would be better for everyone if you did. No, <laughs> that's um, horrible. No, <laughs> no. Uh, Not unless there's a bungee cord attached to it, and you get some sort of thrill from it. Right, but make sure the bungee cord's long enough. <laughs> that's the other part. Yes, make sure that, you mean short enough. I mean short. Enough. I mean short enough. <laughs> Not, <Long> enough. <laughs> yeah, d- don't make it too long. That ends in disaster. Yes. I speak from experience. No, I'm kidding. Well, why uh, do you think he's the way he is? Um, <laughs> no, the no. What a, a more specifically to, to where this actually makes sense. Um, you know, I'm a, a Benson amps fanboy. Yes, and have been forever. Super um, sweet guy. Love him. Mm-hmm. Yep. Talked to him for a long time. Uh, mm-hmm. He he's he's been bugging me for years. I have a really early build of his. It's like serial number fifty four, I believe. Um, and you know, as you know. Once you do things for a long time, you tend to get better at them, and you learn tricks and things along the ways, along the way, rather. Well, for like two years, he's been like, hey, dude, uh, bring your amp back up. Um, I know how to make it better. I'm like, psh, how could it get any better? It's already exactly what I need. Right. Like, uh, I don't and, want it better. I yeah, don't it's, want it better. I don't want it better. It's fine. And then finally, it was like, okay, I'll bring it up to you. Um, and I brought it up to him uh, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, and um, he spent about thirty minutes just tweak some things. I don't know what you electronics people do in there, but he. Uh, tri- tw- it's all no, magic. He, there's, there's it's like, all magic. We have, we have basically this dust. It's mojo dust. We just sprinkle it on it here in certain places. I think that's what he did. Yeah. Um, no, he t- made some tweaks to the way the power supply was working and a, a few other things. Um, and I was like, okay, and I was like, well, I'll bring it home and. And play with it, and yeah, it's 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 definitely better. It's not night and day, but it's it's probably a good fifteen to twenty percent better sounding than it was, and I just couldn't, I can't believe it. So that mm. said, I'm kicking myself for, you know, <laughs> this guy whose ears I very much trust telling me that it's better, and I've been sitting here playing uh, less than having less than optimal tone for <laughs> however many years at this point. So listen to your had, people. Had you only known. You know, it's it's kind of like if you'd only had um, frozen pizzas, you know, your entire life, and someone's like, "No, let me make you a pizza," and you're like, "No, no, this is this is the best pizza there is. I don't want your I don't want your homemade pizza." Yeah, you know? be gone. Right. <laughs> That's basically what you did. You're like, "No, I'm sticking with good old DiGiorno." It's even you know? well. It's even it's even dumber than that because it's a guy like he's been in all of my amps pretty much, except for a couple. He's like been in and modified. Almost every amp I own. <laughs> it's like a guy I know is good, and I'm just like, nah, I'm I'm good over here. I'm good over here. 
Yeah, I'm dumb is what I am. I get it. Happens to all of us. Happens to all of us. So, listen to your people. But now uh, my what I thought was a, a perfect amp is now perfecter. So, I'm happy. It's all good in the end. More perfect, if you will. Yep. He's going to tell me in like six weeks he's got another mod for it or something. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, that was one of the things happened happened to me this week in the in the gear. Well, that's a good problem when someone's like, "I need to make your amp better." You know, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, definitely not. It was definitely a a non issue. Um, I'm certainly glad for the way this story ended, and that was probably really boring. But hey, here well, we are. only for everyone else listening. <laughs> Not for me though. <laughs> Not for you though. That and you're you're the one that counts. So, <laughs> oh, thanks, Brian. That means a lot. <laughs> well, I don't mean that. I'm just saying. I, I thought that might make you feel better. Oh, you don't think I that? Really, oh. really don't. No, uh-uh. mm. no. But I do mm. have uh, I do have some tips that might make you feel better. Okay. So, uh, as you know, we get a lot of email, and um, one of the one of the people that helps me, his name's Jerry. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jerry actually, uh, Jerry Best to, to be precise. And I don't, you may not know who that is. Jerry Best actually is a killer bass player. Um, he's played with, I'm trying to remember who always played with. He played with Dio for a while, I think. Like, he's played with ah. a bunch of big name guys. Uh, he's from, na, 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 yeah, he's from LA. So, you know, now he's, um, well, he's my age-ish, I guess. Maybe, maybe a touch older, but he's got a family now. So he's, he doesn't, he doesn't want to be a, a road guy. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but he still plays a lot, but it, that's that's not why I bring this up. I bring this up because he is the one, whenever you email, like, help at Wampler Pedals, he's the he's the guy that your email goes to first. And um, oh. so I revised, uh, I revised our troubleshooting methods with him because basically we get a lot of people that say, hey, my pedal's not working. Uh, it's a common thing whenever you have a pedal company and you sell a bunch of pedals, right? It's um, also common if you just... Just talk about pedals on the internet. Right. It happens on that end, too. Right. So, so I thought, well, what I'm going to do, uh, and I'm putting out a video, well, at, today, now that you're listening to this, it's, it's already out. And um, this video is kind of walking a person through it, but I thought, you know, for those who aren't really into YouTube videos, maybe it might be interesting to really talk about troubleshooting things. So, you know, you're not accidentally sending a pedal somewhere, only to have it come back and say, your battery was dead, dude. <laughs> you know that I does mean, it happen. sounds dumb but like <laughs> it's it's a common problem uh, uh, with every single builder that i've talked to yes every single builder goes through this so i thought i would uh you know maybe help those who might get some help from it maybe you know or at mm-hmm. least find it interesting you know so so basically let's say you, you, pl- you plug in and you're like ah crap ain't no sound you know mm-hmm. The, and we actually have some people that get really irritated because we we really do walk them through this, but it's necessary because it happens to all of us. Like the first thing is like make sure the guitar your volume on your guitar is up all the way. You know, I know that sounds stupid, but I've done it before myself where I'm testing oh, something yes. and I'm like, what is wrong with this? And I'm like, oh, my volume was down. You know, I mean, I've done that a lot. Yeah. So, so. V- volume on guitar, volume on amp. Make sure your amp's on off standby. Make sure you have your cabinet, pl- you know, plugged in. If it's a, if you know, if it's a head and if, and if it's not a combo, or even if it is a combo, who knows? Maybe it came unplugged. Yep, it can happen. You know, uh, so do that. Um, then take the pedal out of your pedal board. So let's say it's a uh, it's a Boss DS1, just because everyone has one, right? Mm-hmm. Take your Boss DS1 or whatever that's not working, take it out of the pedal board, and connect two cables, one to pedal, one to the amp. In fact, before you do this, you probably should check to make sure the cables are good too. So you know, plug them in. Well, the guitar I was going to say the the very first thing in this case for me is actually unplugging the board. And seeing and plugging straight into the amp. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So we want to make sure yeah. the cables the cables are good. Uh, mm-hmm. Make sure that there's not other some other problem there that's not pedal related that it just happens to be you're plugging through pedals. So you know, plug direct in. Make sure that's working. Check both your cables. Now, plug it into the pedal, mm-hmm. and leave it there. Get your car or your truck or tr- go on a train or wherever you need to go to go to the store to buy. 
a brand new Duracell battery. Brand new. Don't take it out of the smoke detector. Don't take it from another pedal. Go buy a brand <laughs> go buy a brand new battery just to totally eliminate power from the question. And why a Duracell? It's because those cheaper batteries, they don't they can't supply enough current sometimes. They do supply the voltage, but if you have a pedal that requires a bunch of current like uh Klon style pedals for example, then um, you need a Duracell or it's it's not going to work. It's not going to sound right more than likely. So how, about you, how do you feel about Energizer? It, actually, Energizers are a little better, oddly enough, than oh. Duracell. They're, they're, they're neck and neck, but um, the Energizers have a little bit of spike in, in, uh, in the current, just a mm-hmm. little bit. Um, or is it voltage? I forget the graph. It's either the voltage or the current. Anyways, there's a little spike in there, which doesn't cause any harm, but um, Duracell, is, they're, they're pretty much neck and neck. They, bo- they right. both do really well. But like, you know, your dollar store batteries that you can get super cheap, don't, don't use that. Don't, don't. Don't try that. Um, not, at least not for this test. So we're, once we get back with our brand new battery from the package, we're going to put it in the pedal and check it then. You know? Now, mm-hmm. oddly enough, this solves literally 95% of everyone's problems. It really does. Unless I mean, and, and then I want to put one small disclaimer in this. Uh, because lots of guys are... Not you, um, but lots of companies uh, have eliminated batteries. Some have completely eliminated the battery connectors, which does add a little bit of a level of complication to that. That's true, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I can think of... There's two ways I would get around that. Um, I mean, you can buy a connector that goes to a battery. Like it plugs into the pedal, and it, you know, uses just goes to a battery. You can... Mm-hmm. But some pedals are... Uh, simply, they could just draw too much current. Yep. You know, and in that case, you might need to get your one spot or something like that. Just a, a good um, power supply. Yep. Which kind of brings me to my next point, which is don't go to Walmart and buy like a multi-purpose power supply. <laughs> I know, even though it could work, they're not really made for audio, and especially guitar audio. And um, we've had problems with people. Where they'll just you know they may have already had a, 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 an adapter somewhere. Mm-hmm. That you know, maybe they're like, "Oh, this one fits. I'm just going to use this." Um, I would not do that. Buy one made for guitar pedals, like the One Spot. Um, we have some on the website. If you want to buy one of those, it's it's similar to the One Spot. Uh, it, it it's a two amp, two thousand milliamp power supply. So in other words, as long as your pedals don't exceed two thousand pedals altogether, then it should power everything up. And to be honest, really, you don't want to push that limit. So. If you're um, as long as they don't no as long as they don't exceed two thousand milliamps right yeah so I mean like let's say you have let, let's let's make the math really easy so let's say I have a um, five hundred milliamp power supply okay that's mm-hmm. what it says on it and I have five pedals and they all draw exactly one hundred milliamps you could still see problems there like you're you're pushing the limit and that power supply may not exactly be five hundred milliamps. And the, the pedals may not exactly be 100 milliamps. It, it's a lot of factors going on here. So mm-hmm. I would say no more than four of those. Like don't go, if you have a 500 milliamp uh, supply, then don't use more than 400 milliamps of current going yeah. through that uh, chain there. And, and since we're kind of talking about some basic stuff, um, which we haven't done in a while, so it's probably good in case we got new folks trickling in here and there. Um, this is a common question that uh, that I've gotten a lot, and I'm sure you've gotten ten times as much as, um, what if I put too much current to my pedal? You, you can't. can't do that. You're, you're you can't do, do that. that. Yeah, you can yeah. put you can hook one pedal up um, that you know to a two thousand milliamp power supply, and if it draws ten milli, it, but it says it only needs ten milliamps. That's fine. It'll only take what it needs. Right. Yeah. It's it's that's exactly right. So if you have a if you're using a one spot, which is two thousand milliamps. And you're using it on one pedal, and let's say that pedal draws 35 milliamps. It's not going to harm it in any way. That's basically just saying, here's we're able to supply this amount. If you only need a little bit, that's fine. That's really what, what that means. It's like a gas tank. It's only going to get so full. Yes. Yep. That's a, that's so, a good analogy. I'm going to start using that. You'll have to pay me 10 cents every time you <laughs> use that. <one. laughs> so note it down. Not, not a you, problem. When you, 
But okay. Let me just let me just make out this invoice to Blake Wyland for ten cents. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, what else? Could be noise problems. Noise problems is a big one, mm-hmm. and and uh, that that one's a little bit trickier, honestly. Um, now, I sh- we should go back and say, like, at, at the end of the day, you might find it is indeed the pedal, but yes, um, we're eliminating. Most- we're trying yes. to eliminate everything that it could possibly be first. That way, because the last thing you want to do is send your pedal off to the manufacturer Ooh. and be without the pedal, right? And the last thing you want to do is get a bill for return shipping and and a bench fee because uh, the battery was dead. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's uh, there's minimum bench fees because it just takes, you know, it takes everybody's time. And mm-hmm. it takes time to unpack, log things in. Uh, pack it back up, use a battery, you know, mm-hmm. and ship it back to the person. So, and that does happen, unfortunately. All the time. That's just, just the way it is. But, um, you know, noise but, problems. Like, first of all, if it's a gain, if it's a gainy pedal, like a distortion, overdrive, or fuzz, you're going to have some hiss, no matter what. No matter what. I mean, I uh, so for the video, I took... Uh, my Marshall, what is it? It's a DSL 100H head. Mm-hmm. And I just turned the gain channel, like the high gain channel, just turned the gain up. And it just, you know, you hear shh. You have that, you have that much gain in anything. It's going, you're going to have noise. Any noise that's there is getting amplified. That's really what's happening. That's the whole, that's what it does. Yes. It's amplifying the signal. And right. if there's there's ambient noise in the signal, like when I'm me playing a you know old P90 equipped guitar, which I love, but guess what? I just kind of have to accept that there's going to be some noise. Right. And if if you have uh, fluorescent lights on the circuit that your amp is on, using single coils, you'll have uh, have more noise, possibly, very possible. Mm-hmm. Um, even even where your amp is, like let's say I had this in in my old house. I uh, I found out that on one wall it was actually the power inside the wall the power you know the, the wires the main wiring yeah. was co- was connected to I think it was connected to the washer or the dryer one and I so I kept every time I plugged it in that outlet I kept getting hum and I figured out it was because it was on that circuit and just ev- the way electricity works it was just was not uh, it was not conducive to good audio so I had to uh, start using it on a different outlet. Um, so when I built my room, I kind of isolated everything. So I had mm-hmm. the, the power that my amps are on now, it goes direct to the fuse box. So it helps out with noise. Yeah. I mean, on that note, uh, this is a little bit off subject, but yeah, I think we talked about this like a couple of years ago. A friend of mine has a really nice studio and it was getting, and he, you know, spent all kinds of time and money to make sure that we wouldn't have those kinds of problems. Um, but there was certain circuits that had some hum. I can't remember exactly the details or why, but it ended up being because of his invisible electric dog fence he had yeah. going around to his property. So, yep. um, yeah, electricity is really weird. I mean, grounds are pretty much all connected for the most part. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you can get noise through ground, and that seems really weird. I, I mean, well, I guess to non engineering people, that seems weird. Like, that's weird to me. But when I talk to other engineers, we're like, well, of course, uh, of course you can get noise through ground. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> so, so I mean, you know, because I've, I've mentioned before, I am not an engineer. I'm just a guy. I'm just a dork with a breadboard, you know, and uh, he likes making circuits and like, oh, wow, that's cool. That's a good combination of things, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, not that, I mean, I, I look but at. But Brian, that transistor's backwards. I don't care. <laughs> it sounds good that way. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, and I don't. I mean, that's kind of part of the creative process. It's kind of like writing a song in a way. I know we're getting off topic. I'll get back on topic in a minute. But like, if you're writing a song and you're like, "Oh, well, traditionally this note wouldn't work in this scale," you know, but it does here mm-hmm. for whatever reason. It just it has this oddness to it. Um, you know, sometimes that could be. Well, I like to call it jazz. You know. <laughs> I like your style. Yeah, that's jazz, right? Wrong note. No, um, I'm jazz, man. I'm playing jazz. <laughs> it's, it's no, 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 no. Don't worry. That was that was the note I wanted. Exactly. 
I meant to hit that off note. Of course. Or when you hit that off note and you're like, whoops, bend it into the right one. (laughs) (laughs) Or just do what I do and just keep hitting it over and over like you meant to hit that thing, you know? (laughs) That's a good good choice. That was no accident. That was on purpose because I am a jazz master. (laughs) Oh, I wish I had a jazz master. (laughs) Me too. Um, um, back. Oh, let's try. Let's yep. try to be. Let's try. We're we're yep. we're we're, so, we're trying to deliver to the people. Right. So so that's off. that's the noise wise. That's um that's my thoughts on noise. If you, and people, I've actually had people get angry. Like, why in the world would I move my amp to a different to a different part of the house? And I'm like, because it, we're trying to isolate where the noise is. We just want to make sure it's not that the fact that you know the toaster's on and you hear a noise in your amp. You know what I mean? Because that does happen. I know it sounds does, crazy. That does happen. Or the hair, your daughter's using a hair dryer upstairs. And you don't know. You just know there's a weird sound in your amp. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> well, so there's some other things to talk about with noise. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, and I've heard people say, like, well, then it's the pedal's fault. Well, it's not really the pedal's fault in this case. It's just the way things go when you run them certain ways. Like, a lot of digital pedals, and not all of them, but... um Sometimes certain combinations of digital pedals cannot be daisy chained together with with other pedals because right. they they start creating more noise because of their interference with each other. Yep, you, and again, you need them. It can you be, need them on their own supply, you, basically. Yeah, you really do. And sometimes that could just be like different grounds. So, like if it's a, if it's a pedal that has a digital component to it, whether it's switching or not. Uh, in other mm-hmm. words, like relay bypass switching, which is still true bypass. But it's using a microcontroller and a digital ground in there that um, you're, you're so that way you're basically telling the the relay, hey, when this person hits the switch, turn this off. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so right. so I mean it's it's um it still has a digital component to it, which can interfere. Like those two different grounds can have problems with grounds before or after after it in a different pedal. That that's. Really interesting. I didn't even think about the soft touch relay switching yes. having that same problem. I never thought about that. I always just thought about my delay, you know, right. versus my fuzz. But I got lots of fuzzes with soft touch. So right. yep. that's another thing I never thought about. Right. So that's a, that's a big thing to keep in mind. So uh, um, see, already I've schooled you, Blake. You know, I you mean, did. So I, I should get my 10 cents back. You can have it back. Oh, right. Let me just. We'll call it one. square. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, so cables, of course, always like wiggle your cables if you have if you have any uh, if you have any noise in them. It could either be the jacks or the cables. Uh, mm-hmm. Jacks sometimes can come a little bit loose. You can just tighten those dudes up and spray a little bit of deoxid in it if you need to. That uh, because those parts can become uh, oxidized a little bit or maybe have dust on it and it makes uh, not so good of a connection. So spray mm-hmm. a little deoxid on that. Same thing with pots. If you turn your pot and it's a little scratchy, um, that is, and this is really common in waz too because they're open to the outside world and down in the dirt, down down in the mud. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, you know you can you can spray some spray some deoxid in that, work that pot back and forth a little bit, meaning like the treadle or turn the knob, whichever you're spraying it in. Yep, and um, it'll clean it right up. It's pretty handy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. C- yeah, cables are a big one. I mean, like the the when you got a big board with lots of connections, just one little little cable in there could give you all sorts of fits in the noise or failure department. Yep. Um, yep. Now with of, now with our pedals, we whenever it's not getting enough voltage or current, it actually will just flash and then stay off. Like you try to turn it on, it just flashes like three times, three or four times, and then stays mm-hmm. off. And that's kind of a signal to you, like, hey, we don't have enough power here. So. A common question I get is my pedal's just flashing; it's not turning on. Well, that's easy. Just you know, let's let's get you a good power supply. There you go. You know, that's and, uh, let's that's thinking with your. That's not just a hat rack you got on. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> so so, and that's I don't know if other companies do that. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. I don't know. I know ours does. Um, I I think probably one of the biggest things. And I I see this all. I've seen this all over the place. Whenever I was researching for my FAQ article, um, mm-hmm. so many people say, "Should I disconnect my my battery if I'm using a power supply? Like, am I going to hurt it?" And I, 
so here's what you need to know. Whenever you put that power, the plug, when you put the plug into the jack for the pedal, there's a, it's like a little switch in there. So it actually disconnects the battery whenever you put a plug in there. Mm-hmm. So in, You're talking about the f- for the power. For the power, the power plug, yes. Yes. So technically, no, you don't need to disconnect your battery if you're using a power supply. On every pedal that I've, I've seen anyways, maybe... Perhaps there's one out there that doesn't work that way, but I just haven't ran into it. Um, so as far as I know, yes, you, it does disconnect the battery. Um, but a problem with ha- keeping a battery in a pedal is they can leak over time. Yes. And when they do leak, uh, they start corroding things and it gets all nasty and makes a big mess on the inside of your pedal. And it's kind of a toxic hazard. So if you, yes, and and it can ruin your pedal. And it can it ruin your out. pedal. Yes. Mm-hmm. So if you plan on using power supplies, um, I would probably take the batteries out just to uh, be a little more environmentally conscious. Well, and you you who knows maybe you intend to you know take that battery out, but you're so excited to put the new pedal on your board. You're, I'll do that later, and then the next thing you know, four years goes by, and you're like, hmm, something's coming out of my my. <laughs> You know, <laughs> DS One's leaking over here. I didn't put any. F- Is this the tone fluid coming out of it? Oh, do- <laughs> oh no, my mojo's leaking. <laughs> I got to send this back to boss and get it topped off. Um, yeah. So I mean, like, I think people like. I think the best move is just go ahead and if you know you're going to use a power supply, you get a pedal, just pop that thing out. Right. Throw it in your drawer. Use it in your remote control or something. <laughs> Whatever. Your smoke detector. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, but you brought up uh, something that uh, I think is worth mentioning. Or This is not so much troubleshooting as it is just basic pedal... I don't know. What is this? Basic pedal knowledge or not so basic pedal knowledge? I don't know what it is. But um, if you do have batteries and you pretty much exclusively use batteries and you have it on a pedal board, don't be surprised that that battery dies really, really fast if you leave it plugged in uh, on the input jack. Even if it's turned off. Even if it's turned off, yes. Right, and the reason for that is because whenever you're actually turning your pedal off, you're not turning the power off. All you're doing is making the sound not go through the circuit board. Instead, it just connects from jack to jack. It just bypasses Mm -hmm. that circuit board. However... It's still, there's still power that's being consumed by that pedal. As as long as that input cable is in that input jack, it's using power. Mm -hmm. Unless. I didn't didn't know that early on. So. Yeah, I didn't either for, you know, when I was younger. Uh, But if you have a jack, a a power, uh, you know, like we talked about, if you have a power cable plugged into the power jack, then it disconnects the battery. So you don't have to worry about them. Mm hmm. But you should have taken the battery out. If but you've already it. taken it out now, so yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, that's that's something I I wasn't sure of when I first started using pedals. It was like, what? Why is this? I just changed this battery the other day. Why is it dead? Like, <laughs> especially when you put it in that delay that you had, right? Like, right. whoa, whoa! I just put a battery in here like three hours ago. What's the deal, man? Yeah, those use a lot of power. Mm-hmm. Which I, I guess if we're just dispensing different ideas for pedal boards, I would say, you know, I ran a one spot for a one spot, just a regular one spot for years and years and years. But I will say, um, you know, get yourself a decent power supply. Not that the one spot isn't good. In fact, I, when I went one spot, I, I went to a good power supply. I went to the one spot pro. Yeah. Um, but like, if you're going to get into pedals and going to have a good board, don't do what I did and try to just slap this thing together for years and years and years just get just bite the bullet and get yourself a a decent power supply and you'll be happy and right. i am like the most i i am the guiltiest person in the world of this i had i'd been doing the podcast and stuff for i don't know how many years before i finally just bought a decent power supply <laughs> well whenever i uh when i have like a little small board that i'll take if i go play somewhere uh i and you know i may have five or six pedals on it and i just, i still just throw a, a one spot on there with that's daisy chained. You know? Oh no, that works great. Yeah, I, I, mean, I use I use that for my mini board too. Right, but on our show board, I think I have three or four different power supplies. Um, I'm using Friedman Friedman's on that right now. Friedman's power supply. Uh, but how, but how many good. pedals are on your show board? Like, oh, uh, you know, I haven't counted recently, but if I had to guess, maybe twenty five or six. Yeah, 
you know. Once you start getting getting hot and heavy into it, it's it's worth it. Right. For and, sure. And plus, especially at a show, the the power is always so flaky. Uh, you you never know if it's gonna be if it's gonna be dirty or noisy or anything like that. So I I just I like to put each pedal on its own isolated power from the the supply. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if yep. I did that with the one spot, I'd have to have like you know thirty one spots. It'd, it'd be kind of ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be quiet though. It'd be super quiet, <laughs> and that patch strip would be gigantic. <laughs> it would. I will say, like, I mean, we've talked about the one spot a lot lately, um, um, but I gotta say, but I am, I have, I have a couple one spots, um, I'm really impressed with them for how cheap they are, how well they actually work. Right. Um, yep. It's, it's, they, they are pretty darn quiet. I've, I've had one for, I had one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's 2000, 2001 era, maybe that I bought Mm. one. And it was only a couple years ago it stopped working, which is and that's nothing against them. I'm ac- that actually surprises me because of, in the manner that I treat stuff, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like that thing had been thrown. It, you name it, it had been dropped. It had been stepped on. It it, it had been abused. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, that's I pretty can good. Say a similar story with mine, except not quite as old, but I still have them. Uh, these are probably from. 2008 or so hmm. yeah probably 2008 and they're and they're both still working so yeah yep good job true tone very good yep so anyways i hope that helps some people you know i think i think maybe uh if nothing else it's something to maybe pass on to others yeah i mean it's definitely something to consider before writing to the manufacturer and I'm not saying to saying this to uh, alleviate Mr. Best of any help or of any work, but right. it's just <laughs> it's just across the board. Like yeah. every everyone does this, and everyone has a somewhat similar checklist of did you try this, 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 and this? Because I nobody wants you to send them the pedal and then find out that the pedal's fine and say sorry, b- bud, and just send it back to you. Like that's kind of like miserable for everyone involved, right? It, I mean, because from, well, of course, from the customer side, because you're like, no way, I know I had, there was a there was a problem with this when it left here. Uh, from the manufacturer side, whenever you get this pedal, you're like, I can't find the problem. It's kind of like you ever take your car in to get worked on, and you're like, it was just making this noise. I swear, as soon as I pulled up, it stopped. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Um, and that, unfortunately, that does happen from time to time where you're just like, I, I cannot replicate the problem. I don't know. Everything looks fine. Everything measures fine. I, I've tried my best to break it, but it's just still work. You know, I can't find a problem with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think, well, I know that a lot of times like this checklist of things to go through. I know it seems like a pain in the butt, and it seems like when manufacturers give you this list of things to do that they're trying to get out of it, out of doing anything. And it's, that's not really it at all. It's, we're really just trying to make sure that you don't have to go through the hassle of shipping it to us and us checking it out only to ship it back to you. And now, you know, you're frustrated, and we're like, I'm try- I did my best to fix it, but there's no problem with it, you know. Mm-hmm. So, and yep. that's all I've got to say about that. I think that's it. That that's that's all too. I don't have. Uh, I can't think of any other like super common pedal related. It's usually it's not it's not making sound or it's noisy. Those right. are like the two big ones. Right, and and if it's if you still after all those steps you still have a problem, more often than not it's the switch. Yep, especially if it's a mechanical switch. So, and sorry. that is not that it, that is something that you should send back to the manufacturer yes so. yeah i mean if i mean if you're handy with a soldering iron you know it's 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 definitely doable you know but um most warranty of manufacturers, void well i mean <laughs> i think it i think it depends like uh, there's kind of a gray area with us like I, I probably would rather i would i would rather get it back and us fix it unless it's like i don't know um let's say Jamie from Earthquaker or something, you know, had mm-hmm. had one of our pedals. He's like, "Hey, Brian, the switch went out." I'm pretty oh. sure he knows how to. Fi- I'm pretty sure he can fix it, you know. Right. 
<laughs> I'm not gonna be like, no, Jamie, you're gonna you're gonna avoid your warranty if you uh, if you try to do that yourself. You know, how, how do I yeah, know the, you have any ex- experience soldering here? <laughs> but if I did it, he'd be like, yeah, go ahead and send it back. <laughs> yeah, we don't want you soldering. Yeah. Uh-uh. Well, I I can do it. It just the depth perception thing is. Uh, Makes for a long process. Yes, that could that could go very bad. Um, I, have, yeah. I have to be very careful. Um, <laughs> and I have seen some people who have tried to repair some things before, so don't feel bad when I say try. Like, there's been times where it looked like someone tr- took like a butane pro- torch and tried to desolder something. <laughs> so, um, you know, really, yeah, if you don't have if don't you don't do have that. a yeah, if you don't have a lot of experience, or, you know, using a soldering iron, like other than pickups, you know, soldering on circuit boards and stuff, then um, you probably should send it back. Because soldering on circuit boards is a lot different than wiring up pickups or something. And yeah, I guess those are the the big ones. So, right, I did find something else. Well, I didn't find it. Sweetwater emailed it to me um, that I didn't know about, but I suppose I should have logically thought about. Um, and this is sort of pedal related, I suppose. But uh, Brian, you probably already knew the FCC um, basically regulates all airwave transmissions of any sort, right? You know, like e- even down to like Wi-Fi routers and you know, yep, and like and, that. and things with pedals too. We have to get FCC uh, compliance with with different parts and pedals as well. Mm-hmm. Basically, isn't that that little sticker that says <laughs> you have to accept any and all interference? Yeah, because because if you have any sort of digital circuit, um, it can send out. It literally can send out a small sound. What's the best way to put it? A small, let's call it a sound wave or a light wave. Mm-hmm. I guess it would technically be more of a sound wave, um, just because of the way digital stuff works and talks to other bits inside. So uh, yeah, so it had to make sure that it's not putting out a frequency that uh, is going to affect anything else. Right. Mainly, it's mainly in digital stuff. So if you're building fuzz faces with the mechanical switch, you don't have to worry about it. But if you're building delays and, you know, with the tap tempos and all that fun stuff, you, if you're Chase Bliss, you know what FCC is. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but what I was reading about is that they, I, what I didn't know is like, okay, so let's see if I can explain this in a, in, in some way that makes sense. Um, yep. Basically, there's a there's a frequency range that radio signals and all kinds of sound waves. I'm not saying it right. Like, there's a frequency range for everything, right. and the FCC regulates what is in what can be in what frequency, and that falls under the kind of the uh, category of wireless units. Yes. Uh, um. So they're actually auctioning off pieces of. Uh, the, and they, the audio by auctioning frequency. off, yep. mm-hmm. yeah. What what I what I mean is like bigger companies can buy the rights to use that frequency range for right. their product. Right. Um, s- some of that has been purchased by other companies, and it actually is making some uh, older wireless units uh, obsolete. Right. For the most part. Yep. Um, so basically, I, I think I think a lot of bigger phone companies and, and and companies like that are basically saying, "Yes, I'm going to buy this frequency range." Mm-hmm. Buy, buy the use of it, I guess. Not really. You're not buying the like. You're not pulling it out of air and like I own this part of sound. Right. <laughs> but um, you're basically buying the right from the FCC to to use it. Yes, to broadcast on it. Yeah, basically. Right. So, but what's happening is that some people with older wireless units, um, you're literally just not going to be able to use them anymore. <laughs> It'll be, and you won't be able to sell them. As if I it understand is- it correctly, like you won't be able to sell this product. You'll have to ch- trash can it. Yes, which is quite unfortunate, but uh, I mean, and I don't, I don't play wireless, but and it's I know it's kind of a nichey thing, like not a ton of people do, but it is a it is a thing, and um, I I I've heard I I can hear people like, oh, that's not fair. It's like, well, it's really not fair, and I don't like it. But the the reality is that AT and T is much bigger than sure, right? Um, exactly. And so, if they're in a bidding war, guess who's going to win? Right. AT and T has more dollars, so mm-hmm. <laughs> there's nothing going to do. So it's uh, it's a 716 megahertz to 698 megahertz. It's going to be illegal to use that 
those frequencies, unless you've licensed it, uh, starting July 13th, 2020. Oh, so it's still a little ways out. Yeah, it's a few months out from as we record this. But um, yeah, literally illegal to u- to use that wireless. Did it say? It probably doesn't say like who bought what. It probably. Um, that's probably I'm not. Look, trying to find it. Uh, arg, arg. Um, make small talk, Blake. Quick, okay. make small talk. Well, I sh- I should say that it actually it and it is an auction. So it's like quite literally whoever has the wants that frequency range or wants the use of it and has the bigger checkbook is going to win. Um, so it's literally the FCC actually I don't know how they go about it because this is all kind of news to me. Um, they actually auction it off. Yeah. Um, uh, so let's it's like, see. Who wants a six ninety? Whatever. You know. Like <laughs> T- <laughs> let's see. Um, I think if I'm reading this right, T-Mobile, Comcast, Dish Network, several other telecommunications companies. Okay. It's See, required we're, it. yeah, we're not going to win against those guys. No, no. Yeah, it's like the, Wampler Pedal says, "Hey, Dish Network, we want to buy it. How much is it? We got like twenty bucks, you know? <laughs> right? <laughs> and they're like, well, we've got like twenty billion dollars.' And we're like, mm-hmm. all right, you can have it then. <laughs> all right, I guess that's yours. <laughs> no more, no wireless units for Wampler. Right? I guess." <laughs> But no. I just thought that was kind of interesting. It it did affect uh, it affected musicians. So I almost a bit of a PSA. Like if you have wireless units that you're using right now, you might want to do a little googling and see if they're going to work. You know, if they're a very integral in, yeah, integral. I can't speak today. Important. If they're an important part of your <laughs> stage show, <laughs> uh, then um, then you might want to be making sure your your unit is up to snuff. Right. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I doubt they're like going to haul you off to jail or anything, but um, I mean, no. But it, it might. If it was like, a problem, depending on you'd know. like it might literally not work. Right. Yep. Like so, I I would I would definitely yeah. I don't think you're going to get caught necessarily. I think that would be very unlikely, but I think they just might physically stop working. Right. And I'm not sure the way this article reads. I'm not sure if it's only like in specific cities, specific markets. They call it. Or if it's everywhere, I'm not. I don't, just don't know. Um, and it's it's an article on Sweetwater, so you can Google uh, Google Sweetwater FCC wireless spectrum auction, and you should there find you go. it. It was also in the mailer that went out. Well, it won't be today as you hear it, but on the 24th. So if you're subscribed to Sweetwater, it was in their email newsletter. Right. So. And if you're listening to this in 2021, it was last year. You missed it, dude. Right, your unit's not working. <laughs> <laughs> and this, yeah, this is this is why. If if you're listening to this podcast, trying to figure out why your wireless unit quit working last year, that's why. <laughs> uh, you know how hilarious that would be if that actually happened. I don't mean. I mean, I'd feel bad for the guy because his, his piece of equipment doesn't work anymore. But that would be kind of funny if, like, in <laughs> th- in three years, we get an email from you know. Ryan Seacrest saying, "Hey, my wireless wireless unit stopped working. I don't know why he said Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> <laughs> why would he be listening to the Chasing Tone podcast? Hi, I'm Ryan Seacrest. He... I've got nothing better to do, but I think I'll listen to this Chasing Tone podcast today. <laughs> hey, who knows? We don't know if that guy what he does. That's Maybe he true. plays guitar. That's true. I mean, you're you're exactly right. I mean, for all we know, John Mayer, George Lynch, Brad Mason, Brad Paisley, Red Volcar. I mean, name your favorite guitarist." Uh, Ingve Malmsteen, they could all, all be listening, listening right. They now. all could be listening right now and be like, "Holy crap, my freaking wireless unit's not going to work now." You know? <laughs> Have you ever wondered that? Like, I've wondered that before. If like, there's anybody who's like legitimately well known listening to us ramble, like <laughs> morons. I don't know. I've. Um, I guess I would have to believe that a lot of those guys probably don't have a lot of spare time to listen to gear podcasts maybe but i'm I wrong bet, though maybe i'm but wrong they do they do regardless whether it seems like they do or not because like brad paisley gets on a plane just well not like the same plane that i was gonna say just like you and i but it was yeah. be a little bit different plane right his uh, his tends to be like you know his plane like he owns it he could he right. could say let's stop here and get a bite to eat you know <laughs> wherever they're at <laughs> well see but but what i'm getting at is like like it still, even though it's his plane, it still takes the same amount of fly time to get wherever he's going. 
Pretty so, much, yes. He just so doesn't have maybe, layovers. May, yeah, maybe he does have a couple hours to kill, and he wants to listen to what his favorite pedal guy has to say about stuff. I don't it know. It could be. It could be. I mean, there's, you know, you and I are busy as well, but we still find time to make to listen to podcasts, right? Right. Well, I mean, I, uh, I you know, I drive just like everybody else, so... There's there's going to be time where I would like to consume some audio nonsense. You mean, and, uh, wait a minute, So because uh, I'm thinking like me, when I'm driving, I got the Cindy Lauper blaring on the radio, I'm singing along about how girls just want to have fun. I'm not always do. listening to podcasts, you know? Uh, no, I definitely, I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, what was I listening to the other day? Um, oh, I was listening to uh, Whitesnake. And it was just really the time for White Snake for me for some reason. Oh, that's those are the best moments. Whenever like just the right song hits you at the right time, you know, mm-hmm. it's that time mm-hmm. that makes me wish I had my mullet back so I could just completely rock out, you know. Because mm-hmm. with when you don't have hair that much hair on your forehead, it's uh, you don't look as cool when you're rocking out going down the road. You know, I don't think anyone looks cool rocking out going down the road. I know I don't. Because everyone knows what you're doing, and everyone's like supporting you, having a good time, but you kind of look like a doofus. Wait a minute. So you tell me you don't ever roll up to stoplights, radio cranking, got like I said, singing "Girls Just Wanna Have Fun," and you know you pull up to the stoplight and you look over at the guy and you kind of nod at him. You're like, "Ah, oh, that's right, that's right, I got this." Well, I do have a somewhat of a funny story uh, about that. I don't know if anyone cares, but it's somewhat amusing. Um, back when me and my wife were dating, so this was a long, long time ago, um, <laughs> I was really into, uh, the metalcore, like really aggressive music at the time. And I still like that stuff, but I was really into it then, um, so much that I really wanted to have those kind of vocals and I was really practicing the gnarly screaming and stuff. And I do it basically every time I got in the car. <laughs> well, I was listening to uh, like, I don't remember under oath or something and i was cruising and i was just screaming my head off uh practicing my metal vocals (laughs) and i found out later that um my my future father-in-law saw me um and he said uh yeah your 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 boyfriend was like driving around in his truck and he looked like he was really angry (laughs) he was really mad about (laughs) something (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) <laughs> she was like, I. She was like, I don't, I don't know if that's a good thing. And she's like, Oh no, don't worry. He was just singing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he when when he sings, he gets mad. It's totally normal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was, I'd just be just screaming my head off, and it was like, I just, I'm sure I looked like an absolute madman. Um, so, oh, that's fantastic. That was a boring story, but it was kind of funny. Did you have a mullet back then? No, no, I've always had it. Fairly short hair. I uh, just don't want to deal with it. Well, of course, you know, I'm 43 years old. So whenever I was, when I was 16, everybody had a mullet here in Indiana. Uh, well, not everybody, but a lot of the people did. A lot of the guys did. Well, this is a little different time frame. This is the early 2000s. Well, yeah. See, I'm, I'm an old fart. You're so old, Brian. <laughs> Uh, All right. Well, well, that's a good place to wrap this one up. Yeah, that works for me. All right. Well, we will uh, talk to everyone next week. Later. And thank you so much for listening to the Chasing Toad podcast. I really appreciate it. Very much so. If you have any comments or questions, you can always email me directly at podcast at wamplerpedals.com. Once again, thank you so much. We'll talk to you next week.